Hey guys, Frax1006 here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to uh, download, install, and set up HFM or HFM.net to monitor your folding. And um, I will be doing a series on this. I'll be doing a different video for each type of client that you may be using to make it a little bit easier. Um, and also, I will be um, doing this just on the Windows version. I'm not going to mess with the Ubuntu version right now. I may do a video on that later on. Uh, but for right now, I'm just going to be working with the Windows version of HFM. So let's go ahead. The first thing we'll need to do is to download the uh, program. So let's go to uh, Google and just do a search for hfm.net. Okay, and you'll see it comes up uh, code.google.com slash p slash hfm.net. That's the site that we want, so go ahead and click on that. And on the left-hand side, it's going to have the, uh, the most recent version of the uh, HFM software. So I'm going to go ahead and just download the Windows installer. You can download the zip file if you'd like. Either one would work the same. Just the zip file, you'll, uh, of course, have to uncompress it. All right, and so when you click on it, it's going to take you to this page. You'll just click on the MSI file to uh, start the download. I'm going to go ahead and do a, a save as, and actually, as you can see, I've already downloaded it, so I'm going to go ahead and just get rid of that one and re-download the installer package. Uh, let's just say yes to that. All right, now for me, I get this little red security bar down here. It may have to do with me using Internet Explorer. If you do get that, all you have to do is click on Actions and click on Don't Run This Program. Okay, it'll still download. It's just not going to run it right away. Let's go ahead and close out of that and navigate to where you downloaded it to. And so I downloaded it to my folding folder. And there you see HFM Any CPU version 0.9.1.595. It's going to be the one I'll be using for the demonstration, as that's the uh, the most current one. So let's go ahead and run that. Click on Next. Accept the terms and the uh, license agreement. Hit Next. Um, for me, now I'm running an SSD, so I don't save any programs that um, that really don't any programs that load quickly anyway, I don't save on my main drive. So let me go ahead and I'm just going to change this. And I want to create a folder called hfm.net. Okay, you can save it to just the standard location if you're not using an SSD or if you are using an SSD but you're not worried um, about space, you can just save it to the standard locations, fine. Then go ahead and hit next. Here it's telling you it's uh, going to begin the install, so let's go ahead and have it do that. All right, and then hit your finish button. Now the standard install is going to put a um, shortcut on your desktop. So let's go ahead and open that up here. All right, and so this is what the program looks like when it initially downloads. Okay, now... Um, the first thing that we'll want to do is just to go through the initial setup process. So you'll want to go to Edit, Preferences. All right, and mine may look a little bit different than yours. I've had HFM um, on my computer a few different times, and it does tend to save your configuration even if you uninstall it. Next time you install it, even if it's a newer version, it's still going to save that configuration. For the life of me, I can't figure out how to get rid of it, but I'm not really concerned about it, just to, as much to tell you guys that you may see a little bit different um, standard options when you go into this, but we'll just run through the, uh, the options real quick. Um, first thing you'll see here, ref refresh your clients. Now, um, when I do my refresh, I actually usually set this to uh, about 15 minutes. You can do every half hour, every hour, every 24 hours if you want. You just have to um, put it in in minutes. Um, so let's say if I wanted to do every two hours, just enter 120 minutes. Um, the more often it refreshes, the more um, of a system strain you'll see. Honestly, even refreshing it every one minute, I don't see HFM use a lot of resources 
Where it's going to use a lot of resources is if you follow my subsequent video that uh, I'll have posted on how to make a website using Dropbox. Um, because Dropbox will update every time HFM updates and Dropbox can be very resource intensive, especially if it's constantly updating. So if you do set this for something like one minute or five minutes, um, Dropbox is going to update every time you do that. So HFM won't be um, system intensive, but Dropbox will be if you're using that. So anyway, I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna set this up um, just for demonstration purposes. I'm gonna use every one minute um, I always do in series. What that means is that when it does the refresh, it does them in the order that they're showing in your Dropbox. And then the allow asynchronous clocks. Um, this is just if you're using a folding client that is maybe it's in a virtual machine or it's registering a different time than what your other folding clients are, it'll cause an asynchronous, uh, an asynchronous clock. And, um, won't report correctly unless you check that box. Um, I always check it. It's not going to hurt anything to have it uh, to have it checked, so I always check it. Um, I'm going to skip the website generation for right now. I'll come back to that actually in a later video. Um, next, we're going to go to start up an external. Um, I always like to have HFM start on Windows startup. That's entirely up to you if you want to. You can have it check for updates. I don't particularly like this. I don't like having any piece of software check for updates. I like to update my stuff manually. And you can choose to have it run minimized if you're using it to create a website um, and you won't necessarily look at the program, but you look at the website, you can have it run minimized. I actually always like to have HFM up on my system um, when I'm running it, so I'm gonna leave that unchecked. So when it starts up, it'll actually pop up as an open window. All right, guys, and actually, uh, just one thing I forgot to cover, and you'll see I actually didn't even remember this until I got through setting up one of my clients, um, so I do apologize the video is a little choppy there, but um, one thing I forgot to cover is when you set up HFM and uh, you set up all your preferences and, and that's uh, jazz, and then you start to set up your clients, one thing you will absolutely have to do, um, otherwise HFM is going to give you a big fit, is to save your configuration file. Um, so let's go ahead. I'm going to save my configuration file, and you can just save it anywhere on your system. I'll go ahead and put mine in um, in my My Documents, and I'm just going to call it HFM config file. Save. And then that way, when you go to close out of HFM, it's not going to give you any issues. Uh, I tried to close out of it after I did the next video on how to set up your client. And um, it actually gave me some problems. One other revision I do want to make while I'm at it is you see when I open up HFM, it doesn't have my client anymore. Uh, in the preferences, I know before I had said about loading the configuration file, and I apologize, that was my mistake. Actually, you do want to make sure that you mark that load configuration file so that um, when HFM starts, it will load your clients. Oh, it helps if you load it from the correct place and the correct file. There we go. All right, hit OK. And you can go over here and hit open configuration it'll pop it up I'm actually going to just show you guys that when it pops up it should have your client there once you've set one up it'll also save all of your preferences so I do apologize for that mistake but um, yeah do make sure that um, you are doing the configuration file load configuration file this keeps you having to from having to manually load it every time I do apologize that was my mistake Anyway, um, hope that helps, and I'll kick you right back to where I actually proceeded in the video. All right, next we have our interactive, interactive options. You can um, choose to list your offline clients uh, last. If you don't check this, it'll list them first. I always like to have my active clients at the top, any inactive clients, so anything that's not folding at the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and check that. Um, color the log viewer text, that's going to color it for um, different things, whether the client is running, whether it's stuck, 
uh, things like that. So I always leave that checked. Um, Autosave configuration when changed. I always leave that so that when I click OK, it automatically saves my configuration. I don't have to worry about saving it later on. Um, I'll be honest with you, I actually leave all of these checked. Um, let's see, the, this one, this is actually something I do see some people change the show ETA value as a date and time. This, if you leave it unchecked, it's going to tell you how many days, how many hours, how many minutes, how many seconds approximately is left um, before the the current work unit completes. I personally like to see the date and time, just makes it easier if I can see that it's gonna finish on July 28th at 7.26 p.m. You know, I like to see that. If you like to see, you know, how many hours are left in it, you can leave that unchecked. Um, the Retrieve and Show EOC stats, that's uh, the extreme overclocking stats. I always have this checked as well because it'll actually pull your stats from extreme overclocking and it'll display them down here at the bottom of the client. Okay, next the uh, calculate PPD based on and there are a few different ways you can calculate your uh, points per day using HFM. Last frame is going to take your last frame, assume that all of your frame times are going to be the same as that and it's going to calculate your points per day off of that. Last three frames is going to average the frame time for the last three frames and give your point per day based off of that average. Your all frames is going to look at all of the frames you've completed so far and give you your average PPD. And then the effective rate, I'll be honest with you, I haven't figured out what the difference is between effective rate and all frames. I'm really just not sure. Personally, I always like to use the last three frames. Um, this way, anytime I look at my HFM, it's giving me a good idea of what my system's doing. Is my system, um, you know, is my overclock stable on my video card or has it uh, throttled down? Um, I can see this by looking at that average of the last three frames. If that average PPD is 25,000 points, and then all of a sudden I see it drop down to 12,000 points, I know that there's something wrong with um, that particular piece of hardware. Okay, and then the PPD decimal places you can actually set how many decimals it calculates your points per day to up to five. Um, so, you know, if it's 25,000 points, you know, one, five, six, seven, I personally always leave that as zero. Your PPD, your points per day is just an estimate. So going to be that specific is not going to help you in any, uh, in any real way. Um, messages, debug message level, I always leave to info. Honestly, I've never had to use any. The, I didn't know there was a debugging feature with HFM. I've never had to use it. Docking style. Um, you can have it go to your system tray, to your taskbar, or to both. I always leave it system tray. That way when I minimize it or if you click the X on it, instead of closing, it kicks it down here um, to your system tray. All right. The um, reporting. I've had a little bit of success getting the email reporting to work, um, but it was really limited success. And... Um, Basically, what it's going to do is it's going to tell you if you have a client hung or if there's a client that's um, paused unexpectedly, it will um, send you an email telling you that, hey, this client is hung. Um, like I said, I've gotten it to work before. You can mess around with it. I'm not going to cover it in this video series because um, once we cover the website, um, you'll be able to actually pull up and view if you have a smartphone or, you know, something like an iPhone or an Android phone. You'll be able to actually view the website right on there, and that's much more convenient than having the email sent off. But if you are wanting to set the email up, just click on the Enable Email rep Reporting, and then you'll just need to get your SMTP server information from your... Um, oh, there we go. From your email service and then where you want to send it to, your from address, yada, yada, yada. All right. Okay, for the web settings, the top one is going to be your web statistics. This is where it's going to pull from um, extreme overclocking. 
Um, so you'll enter your uh, EOC code there. If you don't know where to get that, you can actually go to your extreme overclocking page and it's gonna be the very end of the URL on your particular page. All right, um, your Stanford user ID and then your Stanford team ID. Um, if you're um, folding for overclock.net, your team ID is gonna be 37726. Um, if you're you know, viewing this video from YouTube and you're not folding from overclock.net, you'll have to look that up yourself, but you can always click on it and check. It'll tell you where it's pulling from. Same thing for your ID. If you want to make sure you typed your ID correctly, click on that. It's going to take you to Stanford's website. And the same thing for EOC, take you to the Extreme Overclocking website. You can verify that you typed it all in correctly. All right, the next thing is the project download URL. You'll want to leave this. Do not touch it. This is where it's going to download the new projects from Stanford to make sure that your points per day is um, as accurate as possible. And the web proxy settings, I'll be honest with you, I've never messed with the web proxy settings. I really have no idea what they are. I'll apologize for that. Um, just not something that I've ever used. All right, and then the last thing I'm gonna cover in this video is going to be the uh, web visual styles. This is just when it does create the website for you. Um, what colors you want them to be and um, if you know how to to do the uh, XSLT files you can actually create your own um, I've never messed with that I always just leave it as the standard blue and move on it's never been worth my time so anyway I uh, hope you guys found the video informative hope that helped you out and then uh, in my next video I'll start going over how to set up the the different types of clients and then I will also post a video on how to create the uh, web page and then how to uh, view that web page, make that web page viewable from anywhere using Dropbox. Um, as always, like, subscribe, subscribe, comment. Um, have any questions, need any help, feel free to shoot me a comment uh, here on YouTube or you can go to overclock.net, do a search for Wondermutt and I should be the first and only user to pop up there. You can send me a message and I'd be more than happy to help you out. Thanks for watching guys.